more strictly regulated. Um, and that, I mean, one thing shocked me that you can't buy normal cough syrup in the pharmacy. Yes. You can't even, we can't even order it with any codeine, which I find really strange. Pills over the counter without even for any little simple cold, they'll get antibiotics and they take it for weeks on end or whenever they just feel like it. And I think, you know, everyone's ruining their entire body system. And for any little simple cold, they'll get antibiotics for a DNC. Maybe it's already too late. So it doesn't work with the medicine. Um, can cause damage to the uterus, can cause scarring inside. And if there's scars inside... Hello and welcome. Yeah, so before we go any further, let me introduce myself. My name mm -hmm. is Victoria. Friends call me Jamie. Mm -hmm. And I'm working for a company mm -hmm. called Subhak Health Tech. So we, mm -hmm. we have got two products in the market right now. One is mm -hmm. very successful among gynecologists across India, and it's a sperm washing uh, machine. It's a small machine, very compact. It's portable, and we it comes with smart tubes. So a lot of gynecologists are coming back with successful st stories of pregnancy. And mm -hmm. we also have another product called Be Conceal. This is mm -hmm. a vaccination kit. And you, mm -hmm. you know, doctor, you must also know that there are many times when a couple can just do with a little help and they get pregnant. So this is mm -hmm. one product which is helpful for a lot of couples. We have had success stories from other parts of India who have used mm -hmm. be conceived by Subhag the first time. And they have ha been trying mm -hmm. this for around 10 years doing IVF and they've come back with first time use successfully. So these are the stories that we have with us. So it is our mm -hmm. passion, not just to help doctors and people who are trying to conceive be successful, but we also want to talk about what infertility is and why it is a stigma. And in India, most of the stigma seem to lie on the woman and the respect mm -hmm. of the partner has the problem. It's the woman's problem. Mm -hmm. So we've been doing that for some time now. Okay. So that is us. Yeah. Again, the company name is Subhak Health Tech. Could you kindly... Okay. Myself, Dr. Nadia. Yeah, so well, I um, studied medicine in, in Switzerland and then I also did my um, specialization in gynecology and obstetrics in Switzerland. So, and after that, I did my subspeciality in operative gynecology also in Switzerland. So, uh, last eight years we were in Switzerland and we just came back last year or came back, we came to Nagland last year because we've been building this hospital here in Mokokchung for uh, in Switzerland for the past um what is it now five years and um now it was finally ready and we inaugurated it in on the first of august okay so yeah we've um been working for the first month now here yeah. that's a success story in itself that you're able to build a private hospital this is a passion for yeah, yours right yeah so uh our main idea i mean in Switzerland, I would have had many job opportunities and many, you know, um, <laughs> chances of, you know, climbing the ladder of, um, you know, the medical ladder. But um, because we said we actually want, wanted to do medicine because there's also a lot of people who don't have access to good quality medicine, and especially this region here. Many people, they travel to Dimapo, well, or Guwahati, even Calcutta and Delhi um, for treatment. And recently I had a patient couple saying they went for an IUI all the way to Guwahati. And I thought that's really crazy, actually, you know, because it's not, you know, a big deal, really. Yes. Because in Switzerland, also, I, I was doing infertility, also IVF treatments um, for eight months. I didn't then do my specialization in that. I could have continued if I wanted to, but I wanted to actually do some more general gynecology. So I just did eight months and it was really good actually. So I learned a lot and that's why I would also like to use that knowledge here for the for the people because I realize there's also a lot of infertile couples here in this region. Yes, it seems to be like an epidemic across India. Yeah. Uh, so what prompted you to make that decision just to give back to society or was it a more realistic decision well my husband he did he studied um rural surgery or he did his specialization his dnb in rural surgery in uttarakhand he just also realized his passion was to be in a kind of a mission setup where you know 
people who don't have the advantages that like many in the West or in, in cities um, to be available for those. And so we, that was our, our joined kind of passion in, in a way that we would serve in places where there's actually a need. And that's why we, we did it. We, we built this hospital and then we came here. Yeah. You opening your setup there and trying to serve people and trying to bring a change um, and raise mm. a, is very crucial. Dr. Nadia, you've dealt with patients in Switzerland, where you are from, and now you are mm. in a small part of India called Nagaland. What is the biggest challenge that you've faced? To get things that we need. I mean, even just for hormonal replacement therapy, just the normal contraceptive pills, the different kinds, just the stimulation hormones, even just to get the better HCG to do ovulation induction, all these things, I just don't know. I just can't get hold of it. Uh, that's my main problem. Mm. Just getting getting hold of the things that you actually need. Like I'd also like to do the um, hysterosonosalpingography with that foam that you inject into the uterus, and then you can see the the tubes. And I have, I mean, we had a, a product called XM Foam in Switzerland. And I haven't been able to find that here. And I don't know what people actually use here, what doctors use. I saw then one report of a patient and they just used normal saline and did it with the Doppler. And that seems to me very, very vague. I mean, you know, to get a Doppler signal right till the end of the tube. I mean, even the foam is, you know, you have to have done it a lot of times to be sure that, you know, the tube is actually open. And then so I'm wondering, where will I get all this stuff that I need? <laughs> Perhaps after the call, you and I can get into a call and discuss this. Maybe we can help. Yeah. Our company can help you. Yeah, that'd be great. Yes. So what, according to you, is the definition of infertility? Well, because I've done everything in German. My studies and, and all my medical practice so far has been in German. So in German, we have a difference between what we call sterilität and infertilität. So actually, most couples we would define as sterile if they hadn't conceived within two years of having regular intercourse without protection. That's the definition. Mm -hmm. And the infertile patients we would define as those who have maybe even conceived once or twice, but it never came to a live baby. You know, they had a miscarriage or something. So. That's the German definition, so actually the English definition of the, in the, with the English language, I'm not quite sure whether the because everybody uses infertility here and they don't use that word sterility, so I guess that doesn't really work. You, oh, I don't know, people don't use that in English. So I guess they just use infertility for anyone who hasn't conceived within two years of unprotective in, intercourse. And that's also something I think people, patients here, are a little more impatient than in the West, actually. Mm. They come much earlier, saying they haven't conceived within six months or seven months, and, and then you're like, oh, well, you know, hang on a minute, it's still normal. It could be society pressure because here a lot of people, and especially society, think that once a woman gets married, her main duty is to conceive and have babies and serve the family and husband. Yeah. So the definition is a little different from your country and here. From what I've gathered, uh, people here do not use the word sterile too much. Mm -hmm. They use mm -hmm. fertility for a couple who have been trying to conceive for over a year, mm -hmm. not, not able to. And uh, a lot mm -hmm. of doctors use, try to, uh, like to use this terminology called subfertility. Mm -hmm. Their implication okay. is they're not really infertile or sterile, but they're just they just need a little bit of push. They just need a little bit of help. What is the definition of subfertility? I'm wondering. Subfertility is a couple who has also been trying to conceive, but haven't, and they know the problem, and they the doctors know that within a certain point of time, if they get so and so medical help, they'll be able to conceive the baby successfully. So you've dealt with medicine and patients in your country and here. What is the main difference in the in terms of thought process? Because in Nagaland, and I think it's in a lot of places in India, what we do is we take a lot of medicine over the counter without consulting with a doctor. Everybody is a doctor. And I'm wondering whether that impacts fertility or not. A lot. So my goodness, I'm shocked what people take. 
<laughs> I mean, I, I'm also really shocked that it isn't more strictly regulated and that, I mean, one thing shocked me that you can't buy normal cough syrup in the pharmacy. Yes. You can't even, we can't even order it with any codeine, which I find really strange. Here, it's not even pharmacists sitting in the, on those counters. It's just some person who wanted to start a pharmacy selling drugs and, and they sell well and then they swallow it. And I mean, what if it was an ectopic pregnancy? You know, you're killing the person. <laughs> so things are, I find very, very shocking. Yeah, that's very surprising. And, for and apart from that, of course, then all those drugs that cause these really high prolactin levels, I mean, they're not even... I don't think there, I mean, you can't even get many of them in Switzerland because I think of those side effects. And so many women come to me saying they've not had the periods for eight or nine months or something. And, and then I have to ask all the questions and find, finally I find out they're just taking something for their stomach and often they can't really say even what it is. When I finally find out what they're taking, it's these levosol periods or rabiprazol, and they create these such high prolactin levels I've never even seen before. <laughs> so no wonder with all these, the hormones going all haywire. I mean, no wonder, you know, they, they can't conceive if they're taking something for the stomach. They, some fellows sold them over the counter in a pharmacy with these kind of side effects. So no wonder they're not conceiving. What do you mean by something for the stomach? Is it like a stomach ache or something to slim the stomach? Which one? Well, nearly everyone here has gastritis, it seems. <laughs> I think it's the diet, which is really unhealthy <laughs> for, you know, the amount of chili and bamboo shoot and acuni, all those strong things, all the smoked um, meat and, and what, they, it really attacks the stomach. And so many people here suffer from gastritis and re reflux. And so all those medicines that help with that, um, or many of them have those side effects that they shoot up the wrong hormones. So, yeah. so oh I think God. that's one of the issues. And then also over medication for any little simple cold, they'll get antibiotics and then take it for weeks on end or whenever they just feel like it. And I think, you know, everyone's ruining their entire body system with all these drugs. And there's nobody to spread them. I can't prove it, but I can imagine that it can't be healthy. Yeah, so for people who have got gastritis, and like you said, it's very, very common here. They just go and buy whatever they want. They go to the pharmacy. They just buy whatever the guy gives and they come and pop it in. And that can cause mm. long-term issues such as suffer subfertility. Yeah, I mean, it does go back. When they stop the medicine, it goes back to square one. But they just also have to know that that's a problem. Mm -hmm. So... So I mean, we don't know what the long-term effects are, but usually uh, the prolactin levels come down once they've stopped it. So. That's right. 